So Gibran is going to be presenting his benchmark portfolio, um, which is a combination of many of his uh, most successful projects from this year. He's going to be explaining what he learned and um, why, how it's going to help him grow as a student. A lot of these projects um, are designed to help him be successful in college, as well as um, use metacognitive skills to think about the ways that his thought process works and his learning experience is progressing. Okay, so welcome everybody today to my Benchmark Portfolio presentation. As Yeshi said, I will be talking about how I've grown as a student and I will be presenting three artifacts as evidence that I have grown as this person. But first I will start off by telling you a little about myself so you can understand me and then move on to my artifacts. I have a couple of interests. I love making music, whereas I mean I rap and I also produce my own beats. I love playing music, which what I mean by that is I DJ uh, as a hobby. I also love to listen to music. To the left is one of my favorite artists. He's a Canadian rapper, his name is Drake. And a lot of people that really know me find um, that I have a little obsession towards him, but it actually goes deeper than that because him and me share a similar past when it comes to our parents being divorced at a very young age. So his lyrics have a lot to do with that, and I can really connect with him in that way. Also, I'm a very sporty kid ever since I was young. I've never played video games or played with Hot Wheels or action figures. I've always just been all about sports, and I've played baseball when I was young, and now I moved transition onto soccer. Also, I love technology. Ever since I got my first computer, I've been exposed to this technological world that we live in. And um, I'm just updated with all the new softwares and gadgets and all the new technology that's coming out. I love performance. I love to public speak. Ever since I was a child, I've learned to do public speaking and I love getting my message through um, verbally. I feel like other people do it through poetry or other mediums, but I do it vocally. Um, I'm very fond of my education as well. A lot of kids see education as something that's mandatory and required by the law, but I feel that it's something that should help you grow as a person and it connects to also what I think the purpose of education is. Also magic tricks, I, who, I mean, who isn't a fan of the art of illusion? I have a couple of goals for myself, and one of these goals is to graduate from a four-year college, to travel, and to pursue a desired career. My first goal is really important because I want to graduate from a four-year college because if I do this, I'm going to be the first person in my family, both my dad's side and my mom's side, to graduate from a four-year college. And this is a very important thing in my life. And I'm not sure yet what college, but I'm aiming high because I know I have high expectations for myself and I know I can make it. So I want to aim high like Stanford or UC Berkeley, one of those highly recognized schools. And from this comes traveling. I really want to travel. I'm, I want to learn about different cultures and live in different environments and see how other people interact with others. And um, I have some ideas of where I want to go. I want to go to Japan. I also want to go to um, Paris and Madagascar. Just um, all the, wherever I can go. If I could travel anywhere in the world, I'll just go everywhere. Also, my third one is I want to pursue a desired career. And I feel like the word desired here is very important because I just don't want to pursue any career. I want to pursue a career that I'm passionate about, something that I really love doing. Because a lot of people do something just for the money, and I don't want to be that type of person. I want to do something that actually inspires me and motivates me to continue in life. And I think that that is something that should be related to science and technology. Because I love science, I love technology, so what's better than merging the two and pursuing a career related to that? To accomplish these goals, there has to be a purpose to education, to why I'm here right now. And I think that purpose is to create knowledgeable individuals that um, are able to succeed in the failing society that they were born into. I say failing society, and I know that's a really harsh statement to say about society, but I feel like the way that we're set up is we're set up for failure in the society that we're, that we're born into, and education is that escape, is a way to, to find that um, exit to the, to the failure. And I chose a quote by C.S. Lewis, which is a highly recognized author, and that connects to what I think the purpose of education is. And it reads, the task of the modern educator is not to cut down jungles, but to irrigate deserts. My interpretation of this quote is that a teacher should not tell you that what you learned previously is wrong, but instead tell you um, and spark that interest in you of to, to continue to pursue your education and to want to keep learning and should never tell you to stop learning. My first artifact is a textual analysis paper that I had to write for my English class. The artifact is about a book called The Color Purple, uh, written by Alice Walker. This book takes place in the 1930s where there was a lot of racist oppression and sexist oppression, as you can see here. And also the main character, her name is Celie. And Celie, Celie is this young girl who was forced to marry a man that she did not love. And she was surrounded by all this oppression 
and all this racist oppression and sexist oppression. There's a central question to this project. Internalized oppression is when somebody begins to believe stereotypes that have been um, said towards them. So if somebody were to walk up to a human being and say, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, and tell them tell that for a long period of time, they will become internalized that belief, even though in reality they're not fat, but they begin to internalize that ideology. Also, the next question for this project was, how did Celie overcome her internalized oppression? Because she started as a very shy girl and moved on to a very uh, independent woman that at the end of the book owned her own pants factory. So she, um, she sued her own pants. This is an example of, the, of my essay. And in response to these questions, I have my main thesis statement. This thesis statement is, Celie started off as a reserved young woman due to the internalization of sexist and racist oppression she had been exposed to. But with the help of independent women like Shug Avery and Sophia, she began to overcome and resist the oppression that she had internalized previously. As you can see here, we had to do, um, create a very sophisticated paper. And to do this, we had to analyze the book. We had to analyze different aspects, different perspectives of the book. And we had to identify the oppression in the book and where she began to overcome that oppression. And at the end, once we analyzed and identified, we had to produce uh, this paper that, that you see, that you saw here. Also, through this process, I acquired some skills. These skills were analytical skills because, as I said, I had to analyze the book. I also gained some basic essay writing skills. What I mean by this is stuff like punctuation and something really big that we worked on was integrating a quote, which is where you don't just plop in a quote into your essay and it seems out of place, but where you actually make it flow into um, your writing. And you, you do this by using brackets, which you can use to change tenses, as in from past to present, from third person to third person, and also using ellipses to cut out parts of sentences and then putting them into other parts of sentences. This project connected to, to my world because, as we all know, we all uh, have been part of some type of stereotype have been oppressed in a certain way. And there's a lot of oppression nowadays, like religious oppression, sexist oppression. There's, we are surrounded by oppression. And to be able to see this book and to analyze it, I got to see deeper into what actually oppression is and actually see how people, how individuals do come to internalize this oppression even though they might not, they might not realize it. And it connects to myself, this book connects to myself because as a young child, I have been a victim of bullying and harassment. And this book, where I got to see um, the thing from another perspective of another human being, and see that I'm not the only one. And I, became, I, be, um, I also overcame this, just as Celie did. Can you give an example of um, ways that you see internalized oppression either in the real world or in your life? I mean, I know you said yes. bullying a little bit, but yeah, a little bit more specific. So actually, a way that I see um, internalized oppression is through suicide. When a person uh, internalizes an ideology, it can lead to suicide or any harm of your body. So, for example, as I use the expression, if somebody tells you you're fat and you're fat and you're fat, the person becomes to internalize that idea and eventually leads to suicide. That is internalization of oppression and it's something that has to be fixed, which is why we analyzed this book. Tying this back to your thesis of the failing society, identify the failing society in the, in the, the book. Like, what was it that she was... Yeah, so there was also a pressure from the government to help. The government didn't, um, and the people in power were not helping these people that were really um, living in this um, poverty-filled um, area. And there wasn't a lot of help towards Celie who was being abused by her husband. There was not a lot of help. And now we live in a society where there's, there's, there's more help than there was before, but there's not enough help. And back then, it was even worse than what it is now, and it's, um, society has you know, always been like that. Can you identify um, one of the leadership skills that you think you used in this project? Mm -hmm. um, one of the leadership skills I think I used was thinking critically because you had to um, really go in depth in the book and really analyze different aspects and take into consideration different perspectives of the book in order to come up with your thesis statement. What other class assignments or projects did you use <clears throat> did you do that help prepare you to complete this essay proficiently? Yeah, so previously, as I said, the unit was about internalized oppression. So previously we had analyzed different things such as um, movies like Edward Scissorhands where he was oppressed for having scissor hands and we, when we saw how he internalized that oppression. We saw other things like a cover of a magazine which was LeBron James with a model and how it resembled a, the title image of a, the King Kong movie and how it um, viewed African American males as aggressive and really um, mean. And we saw, we used different ex external sources to then use uh, to help out our, our final paper. After this unit, do you now see internalized oppression <clears throat> everywhere you look or like is it 
something that you kind of just learned in um, class and then forgot about? I actually do. This uh, project actually opened my eyes because now I realize whenever a student makes a certain remark or says something, I'm like, wow, that's going to really internalize that idea when it's actually not true. And before, I would sort of realize it, but not as much as after completing this unit.